it's a ministry, you know, it's a movement, it's a record label, it's a community, it's an outlet, it's workout music, it's driving music, it's worship music, it's praying music, you know, it's a, it's, it's chill music, if you want to chill, you know, it's a, if you, you're missing a part of you and you, you want to fulfill and, you know, you need a big brother, you need a father figure, you need a friend, you know, it's a, it's definitely an outlet, man. It's a community that you can feel free being a part of. You can support in any way you feel is necessary. True Mog uh, Ministry is just here, and it was built to serve. And it was built to reach to the youth, but not only the youth, as a people. We felt that um, the world was missing a True Mog Ministry. It, you know, and I don't know, cocky statement. Just It's just here to fill that void. We're just not here for music. You know, we're just not here to preach to you. We're here to interact with you and let you know that we are people that mess up. But it's a great God we serve that um, has paid a price for our shortcomings. And um, true true man of God, the, the capital T-R-U, the lowercase M-O, and the capital G. And the M-O represents man is decreasing. And the capital G represents God increasing. And uh, just being... Confessing that we're nowhere near God's level of his greatness. He's, you know, I'm a true man of God, but he's it's only one true God. And that's why the M.O. is little because, you know, we're, we're decreasing and the G is capitalized because God must increase. And the, the three speakers beside the three parentheses, three lines, whatever you refer to them as, that represents the Trinity. That represents the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. So, yes, yeah, the acronym it's um you know we love it we stand on it and it's just a just support just the outlet to the community for every community it's friendly to your your churches it's friendly to your djs we we don't make christian music we don't make worldly music we make good music for sinners for the saved sinners are people it's two kinds of sinners it's saved sinners and it's sinners that hasn't confessed their sins yet so we do this praying and hoping that everyone for turn will turn from their sins and get to know Jesus Christ. You know, they're your, your local pastors, your deacons, your teacher, your janitor, your husband, your father, your brothers. They're uh, your, your rappers, your singers. You know, they're, they're everybody and everyone. But first is the one that has confessed, you know, that they need the Lord, of course. And... But they're, they're, your, they're your local community people. You know, when you say true mod people, automatically think you're um, some big mega special person. But nah, your true mods are just your, your average Joes, your normal people. You know what I'm saying? That They're just out here serving and uh, living and craving a righteous life. Like to be a true mod, you must be addicted to righteousness. Your plans every day must to be better. Every day you wake up to be better. That's just, that's who are my true mods out there is to be better and to know that your body can produce no good fruit. And a true mog knows that he can, if he does it by himself, he's going to fail. So he need a man named Jesus. And that's just who the true mogs are. The people that know their body can't do any good. We're the descendants of David, Adam and Eve, and we will sin and we will mess up if we don't get to know a special person named Jesus. And those, those are the true mogs. The people that, 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 that takes no credit for what God does and know that, you know, all good things are from above or from him and know that they must decrease so that he can increase. And that's that's a true model. First and foremost, um, find out once again, find out about a man named Jesus, you know, confess your sins, turn from your sins and uh Get with a group of believers, man. Start fellowshipping. Get someone to disciple you, you know. Find out more and more. You know, study to show yourself approved. He left 66 books out here for us to become true mods, and we must get intact with them, you know. So um, get your um, your biblical instructions before leaving Earth, man. Get into your Bible and, uh, and confess and uh, keep growing. Keep growing in the Word, man. And uh, Christians, man, are just here to serve. And a true mog is, you know, here to serve and be, uh, be have a meek spirit, a, a humble heart, a meek spirit, you know, and um, be ready, man, to accept people as equals and um, 
do it not um for your whatever you do don't do it for your own glorification and do it for jesus and once again man know that we are evil people and that we need a man named jesus and those 66 books is the only way to get to know the about the trinity and all god's glory and his righteousness and he just want to bless you and he just want to help he just want to be there for you and um to do that first you must believe that he was born of a virgin died on the cross after three days rose and sat on the right hand of the father and you must really believe that with your heart you must believe that as more as you believe your son is your son and you know that he's your son you must believe that with your life your life must be focused around the virgin birth the resurrection of jesus and that he's coming back one day to judge the quick and the dead and that's how you become a, a true man of god that's my take on it Just um, serving in the community once again. And uh, just um, drawing the line, man, and showing something totally different. You know what I'm saying? Saying like, oh, he's he's 19 and he sells drugs. or And he's 19 and he goes to a biblical college. Or he just go to college and he, he doesn't engage in negativity. And, you know, he he's kind of a good boy. And, you know, she's 22 and... Um, She's kind of not doing anything. She works at a strip club, and she's 22, and she's she's going to be a lawyer. She's she's working on her master's. You know, drawing the line, being different, just being different, and saying, you know, like ah oh, nah, everybody's doing this, and I kind of want to do this. And and when we we hit the communities, and we and they see our ministry with people with tattoos, people with dreads, people with mohawks, skinny jeans, and we're not all in big hats and pinstripes, and we're normal average people we just know about the good news we know about you know what i'm saying we know about the the magnificent jehovah jireh and we choose the don't crave pleasure and we, we we crave grace and it's that difference about you know for that for that little boy that doesn't have a daddy you know it's true maga you know we we serve the community by by taking part in his life, by uh, being there for the little girl who's been sexually abused, you know, um, for for anybody that's battling with addiction, for anybody that's you know thinking that going to jail and 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 and, and drugging and and a life of foolishness is normal, we we're, we're those people to come and say, ah, that's that's not true, you know, that that's lies and um, that that equals death and Satan wants to deceive you and Satan wants to do that. We're we're lending that helping hand like now nah, we're gonna stand firm on what we believe in and we're gonna you know if you if, if, if the streets won't come to church we're gonna bring church to the streets. You know, we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna be there. We're the big brother program. We're the big sister program. We're the we're the moving church. I tell people all the time we're the church that doesn't stand in one place. You know, we're here to serve the community. Like when Jesus came, he sat with the sinners. And, you know, like I tell me, tell me one time have you ever went to the hospital and seen a patient laying in bed and said, I'm perfectly fine. Healthy people don't go to the hospital. You know, Jesus didn't come. He said, uh, it's the sick who need a doctor. So, you know, we're not, you know, if people in the church, they're saved, that's wonderful. Thank God for them. Pray that they stand firm and they walk, they get to know Jesus. But it's still a two, three million more that doesn't, never heard about a man named Jesus. So we're not really focused on telling people that love Jesus to turn from their sin. They had they already made the best move they can make by turning from their sin. We are more focused on the urban, the, the half knots, the hoods, the ghettos, trailer parks, the places where people are not making Jesus relevant. That's how we influence the community. We we're not picking and choosing who gets the gospel. He came for orange people, black people, white people. He came from sinners. He came to reconcile sinners back to itself. So we serve um, the the community by not discriminating. You know, tall, white, green, you know. Jesus, I told someone the other day, Jesus don't come for the fixed. He come for the broken. And he will use your life, your past. Like, I have a past. You know, he will use everything you went through. Every mistake you made, he will use for his glory. You know, is you know, so no one plans on being a preacher. You know, no one plans on serving Christ. But at the same time, you know, people can't serve what they don't know, and we're too busy on preaching to people that already know Christ. We're too busy preaching on people that already know the good news, and we're too busy judging the ones that don't. 
instead of saying, yo, you know, maybe, you know, at one point in time, maybe if, if I just explained to him who Jesus was and what Jesus did for him and what he will do for him, you know what I mean? And maybe the greatness and the goodness about him. So we just serve the community band by serving in our local churches, actually living what we put on wax, actually just not saying we're Christians and confessing it with our mouth, but confessing it with our actions. Our, our lives, how we give back to the community, um, discipling, fellowship, and just being there, just being a, a, a helping hand. So that's that's how we serve in the community, by just just knowing if Jesus Christ is anything, he must be everything. And at every chance we get, just to not shove it in your face, not tell you, look, you're condemned, you're going to hell, but actually tell you, look, I don't want to shove it in your face. I don't want to condemn you, but you are truly missing out on which is the perfect life. Like I tell them, like, my worst day as a Christian is better than my best day being a non-believer. So, I'm not saying the road ain't going to get bumpy. It's not going to get crazy. It's not going to get sick. You're still going to have headaches. You're still going to be in debt. You're still going to have to It's a man that can save you. Show me, I pay your debt with my life.